Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm continuing in the, uh, the study of the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, now, if you have not seen the previous studies, uh, they're uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, uh, beginning with chapter uh, 11, verse 1. Now, I'm a KJV firstist, so I will read it first in the KJV, and then I will probably look at it uh, also in the Amplified translation. The Amplified is is kind of like a translation mixed with a, a commentary. So sometimes I find that to be helpful. All right, let's begin. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Hmm. Well, let's see how it phrases it in the Amplified. Cast your bread on the surface of the waters. Be diligently active. Make thoughtful decisions for you will find it after many days. Well, I'm not sure what the, how this relates to anything, casting bread upon the waters. Um, and, and the Amplified says it, it's uh, speaking of being diligent, uh, being active, uh, make thoughtful decisions. Um, but this idea of casting bread upon the waters is absolutely foreign to me. So um, I'll just have to accept that the Amplified understands this better. And uh, let's say that this is t telling us to uh, be diligent, um, be, be active, get busy, uh, but be thoughtful, make good decisions. Uh, don't be foolish, but uh, be thoughtful and then get busy. Uh, verse Two in the KJV, give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Now, in the Amplified, it says, give a portion to seven or even divide it to eight, uh, for you will not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. Let me turn my fan on. Uh, give a portion to seven. Uh, I don't know. I guess this is talking about uh, being charitable, uh, you know, sharing your your good fortune. Uh, if you if you have an abundant life, then you know uh, you should help help other people and be charitable. But give a portion to seven, also to eight. And the Amplified says divide it to eight. So that is dividing up what you have and, um, and sharing. Verse 3, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Well, the first part says if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Um, I think that's uh, speaking about uh, back to, referencing back to verse two about sharing. Uh, if, if if a cloud is full of rain, that that is like if your life is full of abundance, if you have plenty, then don't hold on to what you have. Be willing to share it and and rain upon the earth. In other words, share what you have. And uh, relating back to verse two share it to seven or eight different people. Uh, now, it says, or to, now uh, the tree following, following to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Uh, let's see how that phrases it in the Amplified. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth, and if a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it lies. Well, I just don't see anything profound in that statement. Maybe I just don't get it. But um, maybe more, we'll understand this better as we go on. Look at verse 4 in the KJV. It says, He that observeth the wind 
shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So if you're spending your time just observing things, uh, observing the wind, uh, like saying, well, it's windy today. Uh, I guess I won't go out and uh, plant and uh, plow and, you know, labor. Uh, looking for an excuse. Well, it's too windy today. And and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So again, you look up the clouds and say, oh, it might rain today. So uh, using this as an excuse to not uh, labor and not be diligent. Let's see how it explains it in the, states it in the Amplified. He who watches the wind, waiting for all conditions to be perfect, will not sow seed. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap a harvest. So let's not look for excuses to not get up out of bed and go to work. And uh, whether it's you work here in this millennium, uh, most people are employed and they have a job and they have a responsibility to show up and do their job. Or if back in this time, it's talking about a harvest. So people mostly uh, provided for themselves. It was a different kind of society. So back then, uh, you didn't eat unless you produced some kind of a, a harvest, and that required labor on your part. You had to get up out of bed and labor, plant your seeds, water it, and then and, and, and with faith that it would yield a harvest. Uh, verse 5 in the KJV, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so, thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of things, statements like this, that uh, are making uh, statements that uh, you really wouldn't know unless unless you had modern technology. Let's say you've done. Uh, surgical procedures and you operate to see what's inside the body as many um, and pioneered in science uh, uh, doing these kinds of things to learn about the body and today we have of course the the technology of MRIs, CAT scans and x-rays so we can see what's inside but back at this time they didn't know so how could they make a statement that the bones uh, it says as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. I guess they could make an assumption that if a baby is born and it has bones in it, the bones must have developed inside. Um, but they don't really know that. They're, it's either an assumption or a revelation from God. Let me see how it states it in the uh, verse 5 in the Amplified. Just as you do not know the way and path of the wind, or how the bones are formed in the womb of a pregnant woman, even so do you not know the activity of God, who makes all things. Um, well, as I said, you know, in, in this millennium, we we know so much more uh, because of technology and scientific research, uh, and yet. I'll, I'll quote Einstein again. Einstein famously said, uh, man doesn't even know 1% of nothing. Now that's a double negative. It's, it's not, you might say it's really not good grammar, but uh, it really does make the point. Man knows nothing, well you don't even know 1% of nothing. That's how little man knows with all of our great scientific discoveries, we haven't even scratched the surface in understanding of God's creation. Uh, and yet, we know a lot more than we do today than we did 2,000, 3,000 years ago. But um, uh, there's, we really know very little. You know, verse 6 in the KJV, in the morning, sow thy seed, 
and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether it shall pr prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. <clears throat> Well, hopefully the Amplified will be more clear to me. It says, Sow your seed in the morning, and do not be idle with your hands in the evening. So that's that's easy to understand. You know, again, it's just talking about being diligent. Don't be lazy. Uh, if, if you want to have food to eat, you need to get, get out and work so that you, uh, you know, your, your crops will grow and you'll have you'll prosper, but uh, for you do not know whether morning or evening planting will succeed. So it's saying, sow your seed in the morning, and also do not be idle with your hands in the evening. So plant in the morning, plant in the evening. You don't know which of these seeds are going to grow, so uh, you just need to work hard. If you work hard, there's a saying that Some people are lucky, and the, the person who, who's successful will say, well, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And that's what this is telling us here. If, if you, you don't know which of the seeds is going to spring to life, which will grow. And so just get busy, plant a lot of seeds in the morning and in the evening. Be diligent, work hard. Um, for you do not know whether morning or evening planting will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Verse 7 in the KJV. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man li live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Okay, truly the light is sweet um, and pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. They even have a, a scientific or a medical term now called SAD. And um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what SAD stands for off the top of my head, but but people who live in cloudy areas like Seattle, Washington, or parts of Europe and England, it's very common for people to get depressed, sad, and it's because they're not getting enough sunlight. So sunlight is important to us for a lot of things. We get vitamin D from the sun. We also get uh, this, this um, condition um, for lack of sunlight this sadness, this depression can set in. We do need a certain amount of sun. Uh, of course, we everybody's afraid of too much sun now because of the fear of sunburns and skin cancer. Uh, but you, you don't want to go from one extreme to the other where people have been getting too much sun and not realizing how the harm it can do. Uh, and and uh, now you reverse that and you want to totally stay out of the sun, well, that's not good either. We do need a certain amount of sunlight in our lives for physical health and, you know, mental, uh, mental health. Uh, let me read verse 7 and 8 in the Amplified. The light is sweet and pleasant, and it is good for the eyes to see the sun. Yes, if a man should live many years, let him rejoice in them all, and, and let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that has come will be futility. If you live a long time, um, you're going to experience some dark days. If you're watching right now, you're you can certainly probably say, oh, well, of course I've had uh, dark days in my life. Whether it's you've had to deal with uh, you know, personal problems or your, your friends and family suffered and you've, and you've had to deal with their, their uh, difficult times. 
these are things that are inevitable. Uh, if we live long enough, we're going to have to deal with these things. Um, it says, let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. We cannot escape dark times. Uh, all that is to come will be futility. So um, let's rejoice in the sun. And the sun can re represent not only the, uh, the contrast of the dark times, but the good times. If it's a sunny day or happy or uh, uh, so on one hand, light represents good, dark, darkness represents evil, sunlight represents good, and darkness is, represents difficult times. Uh, so uh, you're going to experience both. Uh, and it's, but it says, all that is to come will be futility, or as in the King James, all that cometh is vanity. Or futility or vanity just means that as Solomon is reflecting on his life, uh, he's telling us what he's learned and what we can learn from his writing here, is that uh, all these things really are uh, vanity, futility, or meaningless. Uh, what really matters, what, what, what took Solomon many, many years of his life to learn and conclude is that but what is really important in life is we need to, to know God and have a relationship with God. And without that, uh, life is meaningless. And Solomon said in all these previous chapters, he talks about all the great things that he's had in his life. He's had great wealth, great wisdom, uh, great material uh, uh, success. and. And yet, he concludes, all these things are meaningless. Uh, it's kind of like Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Let's say that you, you, get, you, get, you conquer lands, you require a lot of property, you require a lot of wealth, you have fame, uh, success in every way. And yet, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul? In other words, he, what really matters is learning who God is, having a relationship with God, and then receiving the gift of eternal life from God. And that's only possible because of our faith in Jesus Christ, our great Savior God. So I remember talking to a young man recently who called me in a panic. He, he wasn't a Christian. But he felt God was compelling him to uh, to call me because he he knew that of my experience in, in uh, studying and teaching the Bible, and he thought maybe I have some answers for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he had a lot of interesting questions. But I said, look, all of these things are meaningless, kind of like what Psalmist is saying. I could answer all your theological questions. But really, that's meaningless until you first answer the one question. What do I have to do so that I can be right with God and know that I'm going to go to heaven? And uh, so I said, let's set all the other questions aside temporarily until we first address this. Because all the other things are futility and vanity compared to this one question. What must I do to be saved? Verse 9 of the KJV, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Yeah. Well, I remember about 30 years ago when I got saved, what, what uh, led me to that point was a death in my family and making me face the question, what happens after we die? 
what is the purpose of life. I needed some answers, and I went to the Bible and got my answers. Um, but it says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that thou, for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Judgment is waiting for everyone. That's what we need to realize is that we don't die and just be in some state of non-existence. And, and, and that, uh, there is life after death. And every man, every person will be judged by God. The Bible says there's the great white throne judgment and there's also the judgment seat of Christ. The great white throne judgment is the judgment for all the people who are not going to go to heaven because they lacked the one thing that they needed, and that was a, a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Savior. They never put their faith in Jesus, so therefore they can't go to heaven because that one thing that's required is faith in Jesus. So almost all the people in the world uh, will go to this great white throne judgment and they're going to be judged and found lacking the one thing that they needed. Their lives will be reviewed and they will be judged and the question is do you want to go to that judgment and be found lacking? Or, or do you want to go to the judgment seat of Christ and where the judgment is you, you are a child of God because of your faith in Jesus. Now we're not judging you. God is not judging you uh, whether you get to go to heaven or not. God is simply judging you as once you put your faith in Jesus, what did you do? Uh, um, Paul says that we will receive treasures and that are uh, gold, silver, and precious gems. These are symbolic rewards that we get for um, the, the good things we do after we put our faith in Jesus. Jesus says that uh, don't store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust can destroy, but store up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy. These are eternal treasures that you could never lose, and these treasures are um, earned the rewards for our ministries. Once you put your faith in Jesus, get busy working, uh, not in order to secure your salvation, not in order to keep your salvation, not in order to prove that you're one of the truly saved people, but simply because you want to please God, you want to help other people, and that God does have rewards for, the, for our good works. Uh, after we put our faith in Jesus. So there is a judgment. There is a judgment that we all have to look forward to. Uh, let's see verse 9 in the Amplified. Rejoice, young man, in your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant in the days of, young, of your young manhood, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the desires of your eyes, but know that God will bring you into judgment for all these things. So this verse and, and many others in the Bible tell us there is going to be a judgment day. And then verse 10 in the KJV, Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Childhood and youth are vanity. So many things are vanity. Uh, he, he talks about vanity. This is the end of verse, chapter 11. But through all these chapters, the theme is it's vanity. It's futile. It's meaningless. Everything in life is meaningless unless you first do the one thing that really counts. Put your faith in God. And now we know even more than, than, than Solomon knew that this God that we need to believe in is Jesus Christ, our great Savior God. Um, 
So let me conclude now by just saying that if you've never put your faith in Jesus, this is the one thing that is, um, makes everything else relevant. Nothing matters unless and until you first put your faith in Jesus Christ. So if you've never done it, I hope you do it right now. Jesus is eternal God Almighty. The Bible says he is God manifest in the flesh. God made flesh and he lived among us. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Bible says that Jesus became a man in order to die for our sins. And he did. He died for our sins. So your sins and mine were all paid for because of what Jesus did for us with his death on the cross. And he raised himself from the dead on the third day. That is to prove that he is God. He is the Savior. He is the sole source of life. He is the only way to get into heaven. This is what the resurrection proves to us. So put your faith in Jesus. Don't, don't rely on religion as the answer. Don't rely or trust in your own good works and your own righteousness. Reject all that and instead depend on Jesus Christ. Put your faith in who he is. He's our Savior God. Put your faith in what he's done for you. He paid for our sins. Do it now. Thank you very much for watching. And next time I'll pick up with uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter uh, 12. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.